Hi there, my name is Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. This is one of my basic skills videos and I'm going to show you how to take a or to do a compression check. Uh, it's a single cylinder motorcycle so we just need to do one cylinder on that but uh, it's the same procedure for a multi-cylinder vehicle. You're going to need a compression tester. Now the, if you've got a good one these gauges will come with um, a quick release and you need to choose which hose to use that's got the correct spark plug thread. Now this is a little bike and I'm pretty sure it's that one so we'll choose that and that connects into the gauge. So now we can take the spark plug out, we can insert this pipe into the spark plug hole, it's got a little o-ring on there so it should seal pretty well and then we can crank over the engine. Now this bike has been stood a while so there's a very good chance that the bore is dry so we'll do a reading with um, a dry bore potentially and if we get a really low compression which will prove the bore is dry uh, or there's a fault then we can put a little tiny drop of oil in there just spin it over a few times without the spark plug in without the the gauge in position and then we'll take a second reading and see if it makes much of a change it should do Maybe. Wait and see. Now, compression checks, um, they help us to diagnose faults with the engine, a mechanical fault with the engine. Now, it could be um, blow-by on the rings, so the, we the, the piston rings are worn out, and as the piston's coming up, and it's pressurizing the air-fuel mixture, some of it is leaking past the piston down into the crankcase. And you'd know that because you get with the engine running, you'd get some really... Um, if you took the, the oil filler cap off the rocker cover, <clears throat> you would feel warm air blowing up past the, out through that rocker cover. That's bad. Um, so that that fault would give us low compression. It could also, uh, if we've got a, a failed head gasket, that can cause low compression, uh, or a cracked head, or a cracked barrel, or leaking valves. The intake valve could be leaking. <coughs> Or the exhaust valve could be leaking, or both, who knows? Maybe they're not shutting properly, maybe the seats have all burnt, maybe they've corroded and got pits on them. But if this is just a starting point, if the compression's good, then all those things are good. If the compression reading is bad, or it's poor, and it's outside spec, then there must be a leak somewhere. And we can do more tests. Before we strip the engine down, we can do a lot more tests, or some more tests, to see if we can work out and pinpoint what the problem is before we strip the engine down. And that's really important. Because sometimes um, you might get to the point where you go, hey, we know what it is. It's not fixable. So maybe it's a cracked block, for example. It's not fixable. Let's not even bother stripping it down we'll go and get another engine, you know. Although quite often it's fun to strip it down, but in a garage environment, it's not about fun, it's about making a profit. And there's no way you want to waste your time stripping an engine down when you can actually diagnose the fault with the engine in one piece. And then you can actually be getting on with putting the new engine in. Easy. Okay, so we're going to go across to Ruby. Ruby's a little SR125 that we've had for years and years and years, and hardly ever use it, so it's good to, to make use of it with this video and we will take with us our compression tester and we'll see what she's got as, a, as regards compression. It's not a performance engine, it's only a little tiny 125cc sort of commuty, cruisy style Yamaha bike. It's about 20 years old as well so it's a bit tired but she's good fun to ride, you know. Okay, so uh, the first job is to remove the spark plug from the engine. Really easy shouldn't be too tight and without dropping it just pop it down on the floor out of the way so the next job now the spark plug is out is to install the uh, the high pressure hose with the right threads now if you want to if you want to double check the threads actually you get your spark plug and you just lay them on top like that thread to thread and they should they should match also check the diameter as well, that's important, because 
a lot of these threads are straight into aluminium and you don't want to cross thread it that would be really bad now these things are only hand tight you don't have to use a spanner on there and now we can connect through the airline fitting our gauge okay so all we need to do is turn on the ignition make sure the bikes in neutral pretty sure it is and then we just crank it over okay and you'll find that the needle will, will start to climb and then it'll get to a point where it won't climb any higher and that's when you need to stop and as it is we've got ourselves the outer is psi and we've got about 130 psi reading on there now that's quite low um, 150 is pretty good, you know, 150 is alright, so hey, it could be pretty dry in there, so we'll, I'll take the pipe off, we'll put a drop of oil down there, we'll spin the engine over again, and we'll see if that improves it. Cool. Okay, so just to put a little bit of oil down there, just a few drops is normally enough, because it has been stuck for a few months, it's bound to be really dry. There we go. Okay, so we'll just spin over the engine now, put the oil in, just to make sure it's lubricating the whole bore. Give it a few few flicks of the starter. <laughs> Certainly got plenty of oil in there now. Right, let's pop the uh, pop the lead back on the pipe. There we go. Gauge back on. And make sure it's zero. And give it another crank. There we go. And we've got, well, basically 140. So we've gone up about 10 psi. 140 psi um, compression. That's about right for one of these, to be honest. Um, I'll have a look in the manual and see what it says, but that, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. So that's how you take a compression test. And you've got to make sure that the engine's not bone dry. You need to make sure you've got a bit of, a bit of oil down the bore. Okay, so uh, just a quick summary then. The only reason why I put oil down the bore is because that bike's been stood for about a year, in all honesty. Um, we charged the battery up and it won't start. No doubt the fuel's off and the carbs all gunky and stuff and there could be other faults with it as well. But I wanted to do a compression test to make sure there was nothing mechanically wrong with that part of the engine. And it all seems pretty good. So it's probably just stale fuel, that kind of stuff. Um, so if you're doing a compression test on a car or a motorbike that's come straight in off the road and it's, it's been running recently, then there's no need to put any oil down the bore. Just wanna make that really, really clear. It's just if you've done an engine rebuild or the bike's been stored for a long time, and the cylinder's dry. Um, what else would you need to do? It's say, for example, as well, if, um, if the floats on the carburetor had stuck open and it had flooded the engine with petrol overnight uh, into the crankcase and filled the crankcase up with petrol. I've known that happened before. Uh, if the, if the, uh, the, the floats, float va uh, valve sticks, then again, you'd have drained all that out of the, of the crankcase. You'd have put fresh oil in, but there won't have been any oil on the bore, the fuel will have washed it all away. So it's important that you lube that bore a little bit just to you know, make it as it would be under normal service, under, under normal use. Otherwise you're gonna get a false reading. You're gonna think, hey, it's way down on compression. Where in actual fact, it needs a little tiny bit of oil on there and you'll find your compression will much improve. We saw a 10, a 10 PSI improvement on that bike. Um, as regards compression testers, there's quite a few different ones out on the market. Some that you just push down as you crank it over. They've got like a, a tapered rubber grommet at the end of them. They're okay. They're fast. You know, you just take all the plugs out and try it as you go along. Um, you've just got to make sure you don't allow any leaks. Because if you get a bit of a leak down there, you're going to get a false reading. Okay. Uh, I hope you found that video helpful. Um, if you did and you want to watch a few more and you find then just subscribe to the channel. Um, if you have any questions or comments, then please leave them down the bottom and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. 
Uh, and that's about it really for this one. Thanks for watching. Uh, my name's Andy Young. I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland. Cheers for now. Over and out. Thank you.